Will Simpson here and welcome to Exploring Photography. Today I thought I'd show you a little trick in Photoshop on how to duplicate yourself in pictures. But first I wanted to apologize for that video mask that you saw. It wasn't that great because I honestly didn't expect to make this video, but I had some footage and I thought it was a cool technique, so with all the quarantine stuff going on right now, I figured it'd be a fun way for you guys to get creative. You're gonna need a couple of things for this kind of photo. You're gonna need a tripod for sure, and like a remote trigger, or uh, someone to help you to push the shutter, or really fast feet in case you're gonna use the timer on your camera. I used a remote trigger, which worked out great. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is set up your tripod and camera on the scene, viewing the scene that you're gonna be taking the picture, and figure out what your poses are gonna be. How many pictures are you gonna take? How many different images are you gonna to create to then combine in Photoshop? Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is take a couple of test shots. Now a little, a little tip, if you can't get your camera's autofocus to find you when you're taking these photos, you can use an object and place it where you're gonna be standing, sitting, laying, whatever, and then focus on that item and switch your camera to manual focus mode. That way it's focused on that item where you're gonna be standing. Just remember that when you take the different poses to reset your focus. Otherwise you get blurry images and you don't want that. Another thing to make this easier is make sure that you don't overlap yourself. Now you can do this. You can take a picture of yourself in the front and then take a picture of yourself in the back, but it's gonna be a lot harder to mask that out. If you leave a clear line between your different poses, it'll be much easier to mask and the, the merging will be a lot simpler. Once you have it set up and you feel like you have a, a good idea of what you're doing, take the first pose. Take up several photos because you wanna give yourself options just in case one didn't look right. And then go to the next pose and then the next pose and the next pose and do that however many times for as many pictures as you wanna combine into one photo. Once you have all your photos, take a look at them on camera without changing the camera's position or taking it off the tripod and just make sure everything looks good. If you're satisfied and have good photos that you can work with, then perfect, we'll move on to editing. Once you get them into Lightroom, go through all of your photos and pick the, the ones that you wanna use, one from each of the poses. Then pick one of those and do a basic edit. What I do is I do the lens correction and then I do just a basic color edit to make them look good. Here's the after, here's the before. It's not much, but that's okay. We'll do the final edit later. Once you've done that edit, simply hit con uh, Command or Control C to copy the settings, the edit settings. So make sure all of these are checked you don't probably need the local adjustments or anything like that, um, everything. Just make sure what applies is checked and then press copy and then go to the other photos and then paste those edits. I've already done that so I'm not gonna do it on these but you just wanna make sure that each one looks the same exposure and looks just the same color scheme. It makes it a lot easier when you're merging the photos later on. And then after we've merged the photos, then we'll create, we'll do the actual, the style edit to them. The first thing I tried was a HDR merge in Lightroom. It didn't work, but I'll show you what happened. If you select all, all of your photos and then right click on them, go to photo merge and HDR. What it'll do is it'll create a preview and it'll show you what what it thinks is the proper photo. So you can see in this one in the merge that it didn't combine my other two selves. It just picked the middle one and then merged the colors and stuff. So we're gonna cancel that. So we're gonna have to do this one in Photoshop, which is what the video is about, so no big deal. So to open them in Photoshop, we're gonna make sure all, all of your photos are selected, right click on them, scroll up to edit in, and then we're gonna select open as layers in Photoshop because we want to open each one of the images in the same file as a layer. So click that. Once we're in Photoshop, we wanna align the layers. Even though you use the tripod, sometimes your, your photos can slightly change, it's any kind of movement can cause them to be slightly off. So we're gonna align the layers to make sure that they're perfectly even and everything is where they should be. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna select each of the layers. So you can click one and then press shift and click the next one or all the way down. Go to edit and then we're gonna scroll down to auto align layers. Click that 
And then I'm just gonna use auto because we use a tripod so they should be close enough that auto should just be totally fine. Don't be surprised if your computer starts smoking and whining and complaining about working overtime. Once the alignment is done, you might notice that there's these edges here on the side where there's the picture is not there. That's because when the alignment occurred, it balanced it all out and found that there was nothing there that aligned. That's okay, we'll get rid of it later on in the crop. Next step is we have to mask the images to merge them together. So make sure that the top layer is selected over here on the right side. Just click that one. And then we're gonna click the mask button, which is this button down here that looks like a square with a black circle in it. We're gonna click that. That creates our mask. Now in Photoshop, white means reveal, black means conceal. So anything that's white is showing and anything that's black is, is hiding. So to reveal the layers below, we're gonna use the brush tool to kind of to paint away parts of the image. So you can click the brush here on the left side, or you can press B on your keyboard. Now remember, white reveals, black conceals. So in the bottom left, these are your colors. If they're not white and black, you can press this little button here and it'll reset them, or you can press D on your keyboard. Let's say they're weird like that, just press D and it'll reset them. And since we wanna hide part of the top layer to reveal the, the layer below, we want it to be black. So you can press the arrows here to, to switch between them or you can press X on your keyboard and that switches between them. Once you have that, make sure that opacity up here is 100% and flow is 100%. That just basically means that the brush is a full it's full intensity, like it will completely remove that entire section of the image. To enlarge the brush, you can use the left and right brackets, so left to decrease, right to increase, or you can click Control and Option on a Mac and left click and move back and forth to enlarge it. On a PC, hold down Control, Alt, and right click and slide left and right. On Mac, it's Control, Option, left click. On PC, it's Control, Alt, right click and then slide left and right. Make sure that black is the four color here, that your mask is selected, so if you have an image selected, select the mask. Opacity and flow is 100%. Now these little eyes here, this kind of hides that layer. So if I click this, it shows me that the left side is the next one. So what we wanna do is we wanna paint on the left side to reveal that second image. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna click here, and we're just gonna paint all around here, my mouse is being weird, paint all around here to show that left image. And done, okay good, so now we have that done. This is why it makes it a lot easier to leave a space between your two images, because if you don't, then it, it makes it, you have to get really fine and detailed to do a nice clean mask. So this just makes it a lot easier. Next we're gonna do the mask for the final picture. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off the top two layers and we see that the final layer is me in the middle. So let's turn on the layers again, make sure the mask is selected, black is the color, and then we're gonna paint right here. Now you'll notice that I'm not showing up. Now do you know why that is? That's because we have to mask out that same section on the second layer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click the second layer, we're gonna create a new mask, and then we're gonna zoom in on the image a little, since it's just right there, and we're just gonna paint right there. Now if you make a mistake, and let's say for example here, I uh, brush there, you see how now I can see that part of the image? Well what you can do is you can press X on your keyboard to toggle back to white. See how white became the top layer here? Remember, white reveals, black conceals. Using the same mask on the second layer, we'll paint here and we'll bring back that part of the image. Also, if you notice, I deleted my arm here. So let's zoom in. Let's make the brush a little bit smaller. And then we're gonna, with white as the four color, paint back my arm just until I see that. And we'll get back the bowl here, kind of get that dark part of the image. So mixes up, get the popcorn here, and that looks, make sure I got it all here, that's good, okay good. And that looks good. So if you make a mistake, you just simply press X to get the white as the foreground, select the correct mask, and then reveal what you need to reveal. It's very easy, it's like erasing and 
um, drawing back. It's really quick and really easy. Once you get it to how you want it, the next thing to do is crop it. So the easiest way to do that is to select the crop tool, which is right here, or press C on your keyboard. Then select whatever dimension you want. I'll use a 16 by nine, which is like the YouTube size. And then I'll pick what's where exactly I want it. And I want it just right there. I think that looks, uh, okay, good. that looks good. And then press enter and then voila, there you have it. Once you've cropped it, the final thing to do is just do your final color edit. Now you can do that in Photoshop or you can take it back into Lightroom. I prefer to do it back in Lightroom because I'm just more comfortable with it. And since you exported it in from Lightroom into Photoshop, you should be able to just save it by going to file and saving or pressing command or control S and that should send it back into Lightroom. As you can see, I finished my color edit here. Uh, I just went ahead and did it, no problem, because that's totally up to your style, so you can create it however you want. But now you've cloned yourself. I hope people can handle it, because I've already been told that there's way too many wills for, for them to handle, and <laughs> I'm not even sure if I can handle that many wills. <laughs> it's a fairly simple process, but you can get really creative with this one. I hope you have a lot of fun with it. If this was helpful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I do videos like this every Monday, little tips, tricks, tutorials, things like that, and I'd love to have you along. So I'll see you then. And as always, don't forget to enjoy the journey that is exploring photography.